All right, I know I'm live on Facebook. I'm gonna wait because we only have an hour on Instagram. Instagram only gives you an hour, they cut you off. I, and we're not gonna go an hour today. But I just wanna make sure we have plenty of time. So let me, actually I could probably go ahead and go live for Instagram. Yeah. Praying over all these connections today. Okay, that's which is the other side, sorry. Sorry, Instagram. Okay, Instagram. Can everybody hear me okay? I did a test run last night in my pajamas. Facebook, can you hear me? Instagram, can you hear me? Just give me like a heart on Instagram. Um, hey, everybody. Holly, is that you? Yay. Holly, you gotta set your alarm now for the next Thursday's 10 o'clock. Okay, you did it last session, you gotta do it again. Hey, yeah, okay, good, you can hear me. Facebook, can you just give me a comment that you can hear me? Okay, okay, perfect, because I did test this out last night. Yes, yay, okay, I'm so happy. Okay, yes, <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So excited, so excited. Oh, we're here, oh my gosh, I hate that we're having to do virtual, um, but hey, I'm so thankful. Oh, Stephanie Newton, hey guys, Cindy, oh, all my friends. Hey, I know this is hard, guys. Um, Ginger Bubalo, I know some of you are got probably have kids. Um, Holly and I, she has Cherokee, and I have Paulding, so I've got one in school, and then my other is at Mount Perrin, and they're in school, so we don't have to worry about a kid being home learning, but some of you I know probably have kids around you that are learning, so I wanna respect your time. Um, um, and just give you some bang for your buck during these sessions. So I've got Facebook right here and I've got Instagram right here. So I'm going to be like kind of looking back and forth, but I'm glad everybody can hear me. Um, I have a really big announcement that I want to go ahead and say up front. And like I said, for those of you who have friends that cannot join right now, it will be saved. This will be saved and you can go back and you can share it on your Facebook and people can watch it, share it on Instagram. Um, people can watch it because I know, again, there's a lot of people that can't watch it, but I want to make the big announcement. Are you ready? Okay. The big announcement. Hey, Becky Mallet, I love you. Katia has a brand new baby. Many of you know Katia um, is our Young Lives connection with Moms with Swords. She is over the teen moms. God has called her such a powerful position. She just had a little baby girl. Oh my gosh, she's precious. So Katia cannot wait to see you and that baby um, soon. So, um, so here's our announcement. Okay, next Thursday night, we are going to have our first in-person, <laughs> we're gonna have our first in-person Moms with Swords. If you are comfortable, Mom, if you are comfortable, we want to invite you to come and worship with us at Vintage 242 Church at seven o'clock. We have Toby, who is incredible, is going to lead us in worship. Many of you, I don't know if you've, he leads at Vintage. He's led with my Sydney at Vintage. He also has lots of brownie points with me because he works at Chick-fil-A. Um, many of you seen Toby. But next Thursday night, we are going live and in person. I am going to be teaching. Um, Toby's going to lead in worship. So if you are comfortable, because listen, there's so much going on, I know. If you're comfortable, we want to invite you to come and worship and have a Moms with Swords night in person at Vintage 242 Church. I'm so thankful that they have allowed us. Sanctuary, they just have a, a cleaning protocol. That's why we couldn't do it at Sanctuary. Um, we love them, but Vintage has said yes. Yes, I see all the hearts going up. Yes, we're so excited. So if, you, if you're comfortable, come next Thursday night. You're gonna be seeing it all over our social media. At seven o'clock, Toby, I can't pronounce his last name, but he's amazing. He's gonna be leading us in worship. 
and I will be teaching. We'll have our prayer team there. So just come if you are comfortable. Next Thursday night at 7, it'll be all over our social media. So be checking it out. You don't have to register. You just show up. It's going to be very simple, guys, because of all that's going on. If you are comfortable, if you want to wear a mask, you are welcome to wear a mask. But we won't have any coffee or tea. We are literally coming to have a Moms with Swords night to meet with Jesus. Amazing, right? So excited. I've missed you. I'm ready to preach in person. I have been, it's been too long. I'm ready to preach in person. So excited about that. So that's our big announcement. So pass the word, invite neighbors again who are comfortable and let's come out together next Thursday night at Vintage 242 Church and worship together. So, all right, I'm excited. I know many of you have stuff going on, so I just want to pray really quick, and then I want to just bring the word the Lord has given me. So, Jesus, I just pray for every mom listening, God. I pray for stamina over them, God, staying power in this season. We need it like never before. We need staying power, God. We need that grit. We need just the, the resolve, God, to move forward in goodness and joy, to see goodness and to walk out in joy. So God, I pray for every mama watching right now, every daughter watching right now, God, that they would hear from you, not me. Jesus, they don't need to hear from me. They need to hear from you. So Jesus, just evoke your presence through these waves of social media, God. Thank you for them. Evoke and, and just project your word to these women in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. I'm so excited. Making sure none of y'all have any questions. Okay. <laughs> Yay, y'all are so excited about our night. I am too. Okay. I've got my glasses here, y'all, but I'm, I'm in my front room, so I've got a lot of light. I'm praying I don't need them. So here we are. It's different than we had hoped. It's different than I had hoped. Um, so many of you are now teachers. You're now teachers. <laughs> or you have had um, to scurry. Many of you have had to scurry. You've gotten your kids in other places of learning. Um, so, hey, we didn't think this would happen, right? We didn't think this is where we would be. A lot has changed, and I just want to see how, how you are. How are you, Mom? I've heard from a lot of you. I've, I've met and talked with a lot of you. I've messaged with a lot of you. Um, this last session, our purposed session, right? This last session, it's going to always be memorable to me and probably to y'all. <laughs> it's the session we went in quarantine. Um, Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand forever. And I have come to know in this season, y'all, this is what God has shown me. That on the other side of our plans is God's purpose. Let me say that again. On the other side of our plans is God's purpose, right? On the other side of what we think should happen, God says, I got a purpose and I've got a plan. So this might not be the way we thought it would be or planned it would be. But listen, mom, let me tell you, let me just tell you, some of you are working from home. Like my husband, this is where he usually is. I've kicked him out. He's in our bedroom. Like he's at home working. He hasn't been back to the office since March. Like this is not what we had planned, right? This is not what we had planned. But there is purpose in this, y'all. There is purpose, and the Lord's purpose supersedes our plans, y'all. It's better. Let me speak that. It's better than our plans. It's better. It may not feel good, but it's for good. It may not feel good, but it's for good. It's always for good. God has promised us. It's hard. There is a purpose. There is a design, there is a fixed intention that is bigger than what we had planned. It's a hard season, and I know we're all struggling. We're struggling right now to find any good in any of this. Like, the news is mostly bad news, right? I mean, I am I think people are almost sick of it because I can see when I've, I follow a few news feeds and I can see some of the comments. I don't look at them, but I just kind of, as I'm scrolling, I can see them. And you can just see people's reactions. Like, is there anything that you're going to report that's good? Because there is so much around that is not good. But as believers in Jesus, it is for good, whether it feels good or not. 
Whether it's what we plan or not, it is for good. But we're all struggling. I mean, y'all, when they cancel college football, I mean, come on, when they cancel college football, come on, please, the SEC is supposed to be playing, let's please, Lord, please, Lord, like, it's a big deal, what the heck, gosh, how do we live in joy and goodness, which is what the theme of these next few weeks is going to override these, these sessions, is goodness and joy, how do we see it, how do we find it? And I believe the Lord is saying, I want you to excavate joy. I want you to see my goodness and excavate my joy. Y'all, because you know the very famous uh, scripture, and I'm going to go ahead and put my glasses on, y'all. I'm just going to put my glasses on. Nehemiah 8.10, that's like the famous joy verse, right? He says, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to the Lord. Let me just say that to you right now and to myself. It's what me and John William, my, my 12 year old, we drive to school every day and we are so thankful for this day. Y'all, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the next day is. Nehemiah says, this day is sacred to the Lord. So, oh, that, that just, I, that just, it's jumping out of me, y'all. This day is sacred to the Lord, Mom. This day, right now. Don't you worry about tomorrow. Today, God is saying, this day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve for, here it is, everybody knows it, the joy of the Lord is our strength. How many of you know that? Everybody, you know, you get quoted that all the time. The joy of the, it's even a song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's a song I used to sing in church. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We hear that all the time. But listen, I bet you do not know what that strength means. Well, guess what? Guess what? Because this day is sacred to the Lord, right? You just maybe just need to profess that through your house. This day is sacred to the Lord. We're going to learn about what the strength right here in this verse means. You think it's a physical strength, right? We work out. We're going to get strong. So, so the joy is going to make me strong. Mm -mm. Listen to what this means, y'all. In its original, this is why it's so great to go deep and, and excavate what these words mean. This strength right here in Nehemiah 8.10, is it in its original Hebrew, it means a place. A means of of safety, oh, oh, chills, defense, fortress, refuge. Y'all, the joy of the Lord is a place. It is a place. It's not this physical strength, this physical muscle. It is a place. Y'all, the joy of the Lord is my fortress. The joy of the Lord is my defense against everything that's gonna come at me today. The joy of the Lord is my refuge. Joy, y'all, is a defensive position. It is a defensive de 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 position. See, listen, you, mom, have permission to be totally weak. Totally weak and physically overwhelmed and still have joy. You have permission, the word of God. You can be physically depleted. What does the word say? When I am weak, then I'm strong. It's because the strength is not physical. The strength is a position. It is a position. So when I am physically, emotionally weak, I can still be in joy. It is a position. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Listen, the righteous run in, in, into that name and they're saved. Deuteronomy 33.27, the eternal God is a dwelling place. Psalm 31.20, you hide them in the secret place of your presence. Guys, the joy of the Lord is your position. The joy of the Lord is your position, no matter what the circumstances are. And right now, the circumstances stink in a lot of ways. 
We can be fully, fully depleted and still be in joy. In my weakest moments, mom, in your weakest moment, you can still have joy because it's a position as you stay in this position. We're going to go there in just a second. We did a book study this summer and the writer would, would say in this whole chapter, and this became like a theme, is you have a choice. That was kind of her theme throughout this book. You have a choice. And she was talking about where we think and what we think. And moms, listen, in this moment, let me tell you, you have a choice. When you turn on the news and just check it, don't, don't watch it, just check it. When you turn on the news, you have a choice. You have a choice not only about what you're going to think, you have a choice about where you're going to dwell. It's so easy, y'all, in these days. It's so easy. And listen, it's coming out of the mouths of believers in Jesus. It's so easy to talk about the problems, to talk about the disappointments, to talk about all that we have lost. Like the cynicism is almost stifling. Like, like have you heard this lately? Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Anybody heard that? What does Jesus say? Why don't you believe it before you see it? Like, so really, what you're, you have to see it to believe it. But God's saying, why don't you believe it? Why don't you believe that you're going to find goodness and joy today? You're not going to see it. But because of your position in me, and if you stay in me, you're going to have faith to believe it. So no matter what we, 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 what we hear, let us be mindful of the choice we have, not only in what we say, y'all, because our kids are listening. Our kids are listening. They're listening. Are you cynical or are you hopeful? Are they hearing goodness come out of your mouth or are they just hearing complaints come out of your mouth? Because they're listening See, because joy can live in the disappointments. Joy can live in the sorrow. You have a choice today, mom. The joy of the Lord is your place. It's your position. It's your strength. It's your fixed position in Christ. And it results in joy. You and me in Christ, Watchman Nee, one of this, a most amazing um, voices in church history, he says, outside of Christ, I am weak. Inside of Christ, I am strong. Outside of Christ, guys, our mind will go places. But inside of Christ, even though what we see is terrible, we can still find joy in it all. See, Mom, feel your feelings, but don't live in them. Feel your feelings but don't live in them. Engage in your disappointment, but don't indulge it. Let me say that again. That's not even on my notes. That just came from Jesus. Engage in the disappointment, but don't indulge it. Don't indulge it. Live in the fixed position in Christ. We have the choice today to fix our attention on a truth that will make us strong and glad or a half truth which will make you depleted and weak. What are you going, where are you going to position yourself today? Stay in that position. John 15, remain in me. Abide in me. What? And you're going to bear fruit over and over it. He says, listen, he says it this way. I love this. Clothe yourself in Christ. Y'all, I do this with my kids when I'm making up their beds. Like I literally like, cause I know, I know I make up their beds in when they're in school because they're rushing out the door. I know, I know. I'm just that mom. I love to make up my kids' beds. They know how and I make them do it. But during school year, I go up there and make them up and I just pray that God would just cover them as I'm pulling up their blanket, like cover them with Christ. As, they're, as I'm putting up their pillow, I'm like, God, give them that the mind of Christ to Today, clothe us in Christ. Look at 
Galatians 3, 27, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes, y'all. All who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. Romans 13, 14, but put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Y'all put on Christ. He is our fortress. He is our abode and it will be our joy in times of utter chaos and utter uncertainty. Because this joy, y'all, as we put on Christ, this joy isn't found in circumstances. It's not found in circumstances, y'all. This, this joy is not found in what's happening around us. It's not in circumstances. It's in communion. It's in communion with our good, good Father. This joy comes not because of circumstances. It comes out of an overflow of a communion with God. And that communion, y'all, is going to produce brick upon brick, upon layer, upon layer, a defense, a fortress that says, no matter what is going on, I am in joy because I am in Christ. Sam Storm says, joy is not necessarily the absence of suffering or disappointment, but it is the presence of God Y'all, you have a choice. Look at David in Psalm 42, 11. He, he was, again, he was admitting his feelings. He was admitting his, 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 the way he felt. But listen, he wasn't indulging in it. Listen to what he said. Why am I so overwrought? Why am I so disturbed? Why can't I just hope in God despite all my emotions? He didn't indulge his emotions he engaged his feelings. Yes, he understood. He, he, he felt his feelings, but he didn't live in them. Because then he says this, I will believe. Mama, some of you need to just say that out loud. I will believe and praise the one who saves me, my God. I will believe. Yes, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to, again, I am going to feel my feelings and, and not stuff them down. I'm going to feel them, but I'm not going to engage and indulge them. Listen, many of you know we dropped off Sydney, my oldest, to college this past weekend. I mean, shot my arrow off, y'all. Shot her off like she's, and I'm, she is a flaming arrow. I'm just... I just believe God's got, God's got so much for her still. And so she is shot from my quiver. So I am grieving. Many have asked, are you sad? Are you sad? Are you sad? And what I've, what the Lord is, as I, as I have acknowledged my feelings, yes, I have been sad. And as we walked away from her, like I could get emotional right now, as we walked away from her, I, I felt sadness, y'all. But in, in that moment, in that moment, there was joy. I mean, this is my firstborn, my baby. Like, I'm leaving at Georgia. Like, I'm, bye. Like, her room has been cleaned for seven days. Like, it's shocking. Like, I'm leaving my baby. And I was sad. But y'all, there was so much joy. There was so much joy. Because listen, I put myself in Christ that morning. I had communion with my father that morning. So the circumstances of my child being left didn't dictate my joy. So while I'm still grieving, I'm grieving that the, her childhood is over. I'm grieving her childhood is over. But I am in complete joy over what God has done and is going to continue to do because joy is found in Christ, not in circumstances. And as we stick our position in Christ, joy is there. If you get yourself dressed, mama, every morning, as you get yourself dressed physically, let me remind you, get yourself dressed spiritually. And yes, Ephesians 6 Ephesians 6, the armor of God, get dressed, put on Christ every morning, and then your circumstances will not dictate your joy. 
Your communion, your position will dictate your joy. I want to just speak this over. Y'all know I love this book. Many of you have this book. And there is a chapter in this book as I was preparing this teaching called The, the Secret of Getting Dressed. Y'all, speak this over your babies and I'm speaking this over you. Listen to what he says. And I, I woke up early this morning and the Lord kept telling me, I want you to tell them that I am well pleased with them. And, and I, I, I was like, Lord, that's what you said to Jesus when he was baptized. And I was subbing yesterday and, and I was telling these seventh grade girls, um, some I could tell did not believe it. And one even said she didn't believe it. I just felt the spirit. I was, I was speaking identity into these girls and speaking who they are. And so I, I guess that just kind of kept my thought and the Lord just, I need you to know this morning, mom, God is well pleased with you. Some of you may be like, I have been disappointment, disappointed. I have been cynical. I have not just felt my feelings. I have engaged them. I have lived in them. Listen, today is a new day. God is pleased with you, whether you feel your feelings and live in your feelings for, for more than you should or not. He's still pleased with you guys. But listen, just today, you have today to make this choice. You are listening to his word to you today. You can make the choice, but listen, he is so pleased with you. He loves you. And as you're getting dressed, listen to what he speaks over you. When the Father looks at you, he sees Jesus, and you are stunningly attractive to him. He favors, yes, he even prefers you, Mom. You are stunningly attractive to him. He is so pleased to have you in his embrace. The secret place is where we celebrate the fact that he killed himself to win our hearts to himself. Mom, he is so pleased with you this morning. He is so pleased with you. He just wants his joy to abound in you in spite of what is around you. Let me say that again. He wants his joy to abound in you in spite of what is around you, and it is, it, it, there, it, it, there is hope. It can, it can, as you place yourself, as you get dressed in Christ. I want to end with a funny, <laughs> the Lord brought this to me in the shower. Many of you know, I cannot quote math facts, or I cannot really tell you as I was teaching Bible yesterday and we were talking about this, the different countries that the church is birthed out of and the kids are having to tell me where Libya is and Jordan is and Italy. I can't really tell you where a lot of that stuff is, y'all. But listen, I can quote some Disney movies. I can quote some Grinch and I can quote some Disney movies. And so the Lord is so sweet to me and, and he speaks to me in ways and he, and he gives me these pictures this way. And so this Disney movie came into my head this morning in the shower and it is so perfect to end this message, y'all. How many of you have seen the, the Incredibles? The Incredibles. I mean, so cute, so cute. Um, my kids loved The Incredibles. But there's one particular character that I particularly loved, and it's Frozone. Everybody knows Frozone. And this whole moment, and just the Lord brought this to me because it's so, this getting dressed, this putting on Christ. Y'all, what happened to the Incredibles? They were just, they were having to live as ordinary people, right? They had their ordinary clothes, but underneath. And when they put on their suits, they became super. And this particular thought of Frozon, do you remember? He sees this really like bad guy going by his window and he looks for his, his suit to put on. And he yells to his wife, honey, where is my super suit? And she's like, I put it away. He's like, do you tell me where my super suit is, woman? And he says, we are talking about the greater good. Y'all, that is is exactly what Christ wants us to do every morning. Put on our super suit. Because when we have that super suit on, we can defeat every enemy. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that you speak through Disney. We can defeat every thought. Because in our ordinary clothes, we do ordinary things, y'all. 
But when we get dressed and put on Christ, we can work for the greater good, not only of others, but of ourselves. Put on Christ. Step into the supernatural abilities that come forth as we step in and put on Christ, y'all. And joy is one of those super abilities that spring forth. And today, in this season, you need your super suit. You need your super suit because we need joy. Your schools, your the people around you need joy. Put on your super suit, mom. Put on your super suit and let the supernatural come out of you because of your fixed position in Christ Jesus. Amen. And amen. All right. Okay. So I'm done. I wish we could. Whew. I mean, I'm sweating just like I do when I preach it to y'all. I wish we could get together and pray. I love you guys. Thank you for, thank you for joining us. I love you. I'm going to have this, and it's going to be on. You can share it. Um, it'll be saved. Um, but next week, listen, next Thursday, Holly, for you particularly, next Thursday, we won't be live in the morning. Amen, Katia. Katia's got her praise hands. I love it. The praise hands. Um, next next Thursday, I'm not going to come on here, but what I'm going to, because we're going to be live and in person. So again, if you're comfortable, come join us, 7 o'clock next Thursday. Thursday. Yes, joy, joy, joy. Next Thursday night, if you missed the big announcement, go back. The big announcement is next Thursday night at Vintage 242. Toby's going to be leading us in worship and I am going to be preaching, preaching a message. So next Thursday, we will not be live at 10. We will be live literally in person at seven o'clock at Vintage 242. So I love you. Love you. Thank you for joining us, y'all. Um, and See you, hopefully, if you're comfortable, next Thursday night. Love you all. Love you all.